Hello everyone. So in this free lecture tutorial, I wanted to fold in one more concept into our work related to drawing Lewis structures. Over the course of the past couple of weeks when we've been drawing Lewis structures, um, I've noticed that a few of you expanded octets a little earlier than what I would have imagined simply because again, we haven't touched on that concept just yet. Um, it's entirely possible that maybe in doing some internet research, you ran across some of these structures, and so you went and you incorporated that into your work, and so that's fine. But I still can't help but think that it's probably a little confusing for you to see, say, a structure for something like the phosphate ion, which we're actually going to be working with later in this tutorial, and seeing it shown one way on one website with an expanded octet, but yet in other instances, um, in certain textbooks and also in other internet sources, you'll see the phosphate ion where the phosphorus, the central phosphorus, does not have an expanded octet. And really, um, the way to understand why the expanded octet is probably more appropriate has to deal with a concept called formal charges. Um, probably the best thing to do is to define what a formal charge is and what it is not. Um, a formal charge, just basically speaking, is just a number that we assign each atom within a Lewis structure that gives us some idea as to how the electrons are distributed within a molecule. So basically, the more negative the formal charge on an atom, the more electrons are nearer to that atom, whereas the more positive a formal charge, then that means that electrons are lacking in that particular structure that you've drawn. Um, but what they are not is they are not ionic charges. And so, again, it's important to understand that, you know, formal charge is not an ionic charge. Again, keep in mind we're talking about covalent compounds when we draw Lewis structures, and so there are no ions involved. But it still is useful sometimes to sort of give yourself a bit of a map as to where the electrons might be more concentrated within the structure of the atom. Now, the way that these are the structure of the molecule, I should say. Now, the way that we incorporate this concept of formal charge to the drawing of Lewis structures is we apply a very simple rule. And that is that basically when we draw Lewis structures, the Lewis structure that is the most stable is that Lewis structure that has the most zero formal charges throughout the molecule. Um, just because we can draw a Lewis structure that obeys the octet rule as it should doesn't necessarily mean that that is the more stable or appropriate Lewis structure. So probably the best way to address this is to show you. Um, we've drawn the structure of carbon dioxide quite a bit over the past couple of weeks. Again, just sort of quickly reviewing the concepts involved. Basically, we count up the number of valence electrons. Carbon is in group 14. So there should be four valence electrons from carbon. Uh, oxygen has six valence electrons, but there are two of them. And so that means I have to multiply that six by two. So two times six is 12, plus four, that is 16 valence electrons. Now, basically, we would put the carbon in the center, and we would connect the oxygens to the carbon. That uses four valence electrons. And then from there, we have to place 12 more. And so basically, that puts us here. Once I add those 12 more valence electrons around the outer atoms first, that puts me here. And again, we have to check to make sure that every atom that obeys the octet rule does within the structure. Notice that this carbon currently does not. Uh, but we have no more valence electrons to add. And so that means that I'm going to have to shift over lone pairs from one or more of the oxygens to go ahead and finish the structure so that carbon has four more valence electrons for a total of eight. Now, we know from experience that basically what we need to do is pull one lone pair from either oxygen to get a structure that looks like this. Okay? But, and I was a little surprised not to see structures like this actually proposed during the course of our homework assignments, because based on what we knew of the octet rule, it is entirely possible that I could have come up with a structure that looks like this instead. 
if we check the structure that I've drawn here on the bottom, uh, basically this oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight valence electrons. Uh, basically the oxygen on the right has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight valence electrons. And if I count the valence electrons around the carbon, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if I count the valence electrons overall, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So that means that if I were to propose a structure for carbon dioxide that looks like this, basically oxygen with a single bond to carbon on one side, but then to a triple bond on the other side, both of these structures, the pink one on the left, but also the black one on the right, both of them meet the octet rule. And so basically, if that's the only rule that matters, both of these should be considered equivalent structures. But the fact of the matter is the pink structure is considered more correct. And the reason for that is this concept of formal charge. Now, the way that we calculate formal charge is we take the valence electrons that are expected within the atom from the periodic table and we subtract from it the surrounding electrons that the atom contributes to the structure, but only its electrons. Okay, so here's what I mean by that. Let's take a look at the structure that's in black. All right, and I'm going to assign the formal charges in blue. Let's start with this oxygen that's over here on the left of this structure in black. Basically, that oxygen should have six valence electrons. The number of surrounding electrons are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, again, within any single bond, basically there are two electrons, but remember that covalent bonding involves a sharing of electrons. This electron that I've shaded in blue is the electron in the single bond that oxygen has contributed itself. So that's why I'm only counting that one in blue. We'll worry about the other one when I go and assign the formal charges to uh, carbon and the other oxygen. But basically, there were seven surrounding electrons. Let me fix my notation here. There were seven surrounding electrons. Six minus seven, that means this oxygen over here has a formal charge of negative one. If I then do that same exercise for the carbon, okay, the carbon has one, and color these electrons in green, so one, two, three, four valence electrons. So that means carbon has four valence electrons that we expect out of the periodic table. There were four surrounding electrons in the structure for a formal charge of zero. Okay, now I'm going to repeat that one last time for the oxygen that's all the way on the right. And so that's one, two, three, four, five, electrons. So that means this oxygen normally would have six valence electrons, but there are five surrounding electrons in the structure, and so that means this has a formal charge of plus one. And so that means that this oxygen has a formal charge of plus one. Notice that if I add the formal charges together, negative one and positive one cancel, carbon had a formal charge of zero, so that means the formal charge adds up to having something that's neutral. And that's true of all formal charges. Basically, when you add them together, you get the charge of the overall molecule or polyatomic ion. Now, let's repeat for the carbon dioxide structure that we anticipate to be correct. Basically, if I do the oxygen over here that's on the left, I would expect it to have six valence electrons. And there are one, 
two, three, four, five, six valence electrons around that particular oxygen. So there are six electrons that surround it in the structure for a formal charge of zero. Now, the carbon in the middle. Basically, that carbon in the middle has one, oops, wanted to change color there. Back up out of there. Okay. So that's one, two, three, four. So the carbon would have four valence electrons, and there are four surrounding electrons in the structure for a formal charge of zero. I could repeat the formal charge assessment for this oxygen over here that's on the right, but notice that basically it's the same arrangement of electrons as the one that's on the left. So we should also anticipate a formal charge of zero for this oxygen. So if you look at the formal charges all the way around, all of these formal charges are zero, which is why we consider the carbon dioxide structure with both oxygens having double bond to carbon that's what we consider that to be the most correct structure for carbon dioxide. Now, let's take ozone, for example. And I'm not going to walk all the way through the structure of ozone since we did it just recently. But we know that basically the structure of ozone, based on one of our homework assignments from last week, should look like this. Okay, and we know that there's resonance between these two. So I could also draw it like that. But sometimes what I find students do is when they first learn about formal charges, they take a look at this central oxygen and they say, wait a minute, let me calculate the formal charges here. If you calculate the formal charges, that means for the central oxygen, there's one, two, three, four, five. For a formal charge of six valence electrons minus five surrounding electrons, that means this is plus one. If I look at this one over here on the left, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's six valence electrons minus seven surrounding electrons, six minus seven, that's negative one. And then for the oxygen here on the right, that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. This would be then six valence electrons minus six surrounding electrons. That's a formal charge of zero. Uh, obviously, if we were to repeat the same formal charge analysis over here for the other resonance form of ozone, we'll get the same formal charges where, again, this is still plus one and then that's minus one. But basically, and that's still zero, by the way, but basically what I find a lot of students do is when they think about formal charges, they think, oh, I know what I'll do. If I go and I do this, okay, just move one of these lone pairs over from the oxygen that's on the left, then basically if I do all the formal charges here, I'll leave it to you to verify, but basically each of these formal charges are zero. And so a lot of students will say, well, this must be the most correct structure, but that's a problem. The reason for that is if you recall to our last pre-lecture tutorial, if you think back to that, notice that oxygen is actually an element that's out of the second period. And remember that in order for us to expand the octet, and you actually expanded the octet for this oxygen because now there is a set of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten valence electrons around the central oxygen. And so that can't be. You can't have an expanded octet if you're not an element that's from period three and below in the periodic table. So for that reason, this will not work. So what this teaches us is that for some structures, basically you're not gonna get all zeros. The best you're gonna be able to do is try and keep the formal charges to plus one and negative one and have them cancel. But whenever you actually do get the opportunity to shift electrons around to go and actually uh, create a structure 
that's more stable, you should. All right, we'll take one more quick example. All right, take a look at the phosphate ion. So let's see, phosphate is 4 times 6, that's 24 valence electrons. Phosphorus has 5, that's 29. Uh, there's a 3 minus charge, so that's 3 more electrons. That's a total of 32 valence electrons. And so basically, if we just construct the simplest Lewis structure that we can, basically that would be eight valence electrons that we use. There's 24 left over, so that would mean each of these oxygens has six valence electrons. Okay, and that's the structure quite a few of you gave me for the phosphate ion. But if we do the formal charge analysis, right, each oxygen would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons. So there are six valence electrons around oxygen normally out of the periodic table, seven surrounding electrons. So six minus seven, that's a negative one formal charge. All of these oxygens are the same, single bonded to phosphorus with three lone pairs, so we should expect the formal charge to be the same for them. But if I take a look at phosphorus, basically, if I run the formal charge analysis, that's one, two, three, four. Phosphorus normally would have five valence electrons because it's in group 15 of the periodic table. And we're going to subtract the four surrounding electrons. That's a formal charge of plus one. So if you notice, this structure has no zero formal charges anywhere. Now, typically that's a sign that I could improve this. And since phosphorus is in the third period of the periodic table, that means expanding its octet is an option. So what I can do is I can go, and again, I can't add any more electrons because I've completely exhausted my bank of valence electrons, but what I can do is take one of these lone pairs from one of the oxygens and shift it over to create a double bond between one of the oxygens and a phosphorus. If I do that, I end up with a structure that looks like this. Okay, and that would be enclosed in the square brackets. Okay, again, if I run the formal charge analysis, again, I would expect each of these oxygens that's single bonded to the phosphorus, since they're identical to these oxygens in the original structure, each of these should have a formal charge of negative one. But now if I take a look at the oxygen up here on top, that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So again, normally oxygen has six valence electrons and there are six surrounding electrons in the structure for a formal charge of zero for that oxygen. If I now repeat the formal charge analysis for the phosphorus, basically now I have one, two, three, four, five. So that means phosphorus would normally have five valence electrons. There are five surrounding electrons in the structure. So that means this has a formal charge of zero. So now notice that by making that one small move of sort of shifting one lone pair over to create a multiple bond between one of the oxygens and the phosphorus, I've now created a structure with two zero formal charges where there weren't any initially in the original structure. I shouldn't expect all the formal charges to be zero for the phosphate ion because again, I know that phosphate has a charge of negative three. And so notice that if I add up the formal charges for the three oxygens on the bottom, then they come out to negative three. So work through the questions on the pre-lecture tutorial. And again, you should also use the video on Khan Academy as a supplement, but Give these questions a try and we'll build on this tomorrow. Okay, have a good day.